You might recall in a previous video, I spoke about resolution and that resolution is the rate of distribution of pixels per inch. Now, that's still true. That hasn't changed. But I want to kind of drive that point home a little bit more. When it comes to digital images or graphics or, you know, visuals online, we're basically dealing with pixels because pixels provide the color element, say, on a screen. Or if you go back to a printing press, you know, printing presses print dots. And so a dot per inch and a pixel per inch, for the sake of argument, you can think of them as the same thing. Purists will argue with me on that one, but we're going to forget about purists for now. So anyway, so we're at pixels per inch. And if I blow up this picture, some, you can see that, oh, there we go. We can get to a point where we see the little squares and arguably that's the number of pixels. And you can sit here and count every one of them to tell us how many there are per inch. But that would be horrible. So I'm going to hit command zero and go back to full frame and instead come up here to image and image size. Now, under image size, we have all sorts of good information here. Here we have the actual megabytes. This is image size is referring to the actual megabytes. That's basically 2 million bits of data. Now the dimensions are different. The dimensions are 1050 pixels by 685 pixels. So what that means is that those pixels that I was highlighting here, it means that we've got 1050 of them going left to right across the page. That's if you counted them, that's what you might come up with if you didn't go blind in the process. So we have 1050 pixels across a linear inch. And then there are 685 lines top to bottom of those pixels. All of those pixels combined require data or bits that come that total out to 2.06 megabytes. So, so we've got a couple of different factors going on here. So we have the digital weight, which is the image size. Then we have the physical dimensions at which they are spread, which brings us to resolution. The resolution in this case is 150 pixels per inch. You might recall in another video, I said that for print resolution, the optimum resolution or for print products, the optimum resolution is 300 pixels per inch. So 150 is half of that. The optimum resolution for web publication is 72 pixels per inch. And we've got roughly twice that amount, but it's the rate of distribution, not the actual number that makes a difference. So let me clarify that more. When we look at this resolution of 150 pixels per inch, what we need is 300, right? Let's just say we want to put this picture in an environmental studies catalog. So we want this printed picture to be 300 pixels per inch. So we need to change that 150 to 300. Before we do that, take note, the width of this image, the physical width is seven inches. That's because 1,050 pixels distributed at a rate of 150 per inch brings you to seven inches. It's all just math. It's just math. But the way this window is arranged isn't the most clear. I would do it differently, but again, Adobe doesn't ask me what I think. So there, what do they know? So we take 1,050 pixels, distribute them at a rate of 150 per inch, we get seven inches. However, if we want them to be 300 pixels per inch, we select that, we change it to 300. Yeah, easily done. But now the width of the picture is 3.5 inches. We have the same number of pixels. We have the same digital weight. We didn't delete anything. We didn't create anything new. We just changed the rate of distribution 
from 150 to 300. Okay, that can be confusing, I know. And sadly, it gets worse. Because on the other side of the spectrum, if we wanted it to be used on a website, we can change our resolution to 72. Now, those same 1,050 pixels distributed at a rate of 72 pixels per inch, we can get 15, or well, 14 and a half inches. So it's the same digital weight, the same number of pixels overall, but the rate of distribution dictates how many inches wide or tall the image may be reproduced. That's really an important concept. Another important concept amongst all this is that all of this time, the resample image box has not been checked. This is really important also, because when the resample image box is not checked, we just kind of rearrange these things. You change the resolution and go back to one, no, not 1560, that would be bad. 150. And we'll go back to our original size, which is seven by four and a half. Same number of pixels. But let's just say this was checked, resample image was checked. This actually happens a lot in the real world. We go in here to change the image size, thinking, well, let's make it 300 pixels per inch. So I'm going to make that 300 pixels per inch with resample checked. I click, well, I, I'm not going to click OK, but look what happened. I just multiplied the number of pixels. What's actually happening here is I'm going to resample the picture, and as a result, Photoshop is going to create new pixels in order to meet my demand. In other words, to, to actually perform the function, it thinks I know what I'm doing, and frankly, I don't, because I'm going to multiply the pixels. I'm going to go from 2.6 megabytes up to 8.23, and a general rule of thumb is when you do this, it doesn't look very good. This picture tends to survive these things okay, but ultimately, a good rule of thumb is you never really want to add pixels because you know you want them to be there to begin with. You can always make a picture smaller, but you never really want to make it bigger. So on the other side, I'm going to actually hit cancel and I'm going to go to my history panel and undo this horrible thing I've done. And I'm going to go back to full frame and I'm going to close that panel for a second. And now I'm going to come up to image, image size again. And now we're back at our default, seven inches at 150 pixels per inch. Now, conversely, if I want to go from 150 pixels per inch and change that to 72, I have now, I'm keeping my physical size here because resample image is checked. But look, I'm about to delete half the pixels. I'm going to go from 1,050 across to just a little over 500 pixels across. So you can see that by clicking OK, I'm going to delete a whole lot of pixels. And we don't really want to do that either. So the moral of all of this is really be very careful with having your resample image size checked and pay attention to your resolution and pay attention to your file size. A couple of rules of thumb. These are just good things to know. Write them down if you need to. Never upsize a picture. Start with the largest file size possible always. Many phones, cameras default to a, like a nice medium quality. No good. Always adjust your devices to capture the highest resolution and the highest quality picture possible always. Because here, when you're an image size in Photoshop, you need as many pixels as you can possibly maintain because most moves, again, Photoshop is destructive. It deletes things. You want to start with as many as possible. Ultimately, if we size these pictures to fit a space, either on a website or in a brochure or a wherever, you want to have enough pixels to do it. And adjusting the image size is where you do that but you need to start with too many and take it down to the right amount. 
Never start with not enough and multiply them. I hope that makes sense. It's confusing, I know, but we'll work it through and it, this comes up a lot. So we'll talk to you in the next one.